Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is a part of the course um, Fluid Dynamics, which is a first year module. And this lecture is called Phases and Pressure. So in this lecture, we're going to cover a range of topics, and we're going to start off talking about phases of matter, um, so the different phases that can have, and how they kind of change with temperature and pressure. Um, we're then going to talk about different types of fluids, which is obviously what this module's mainly interested in. And then some of the properties of these fluids, so their density, um, the pressure, and how you can measure that. So hydrostatic pressure, atmospheric pressure, and how you can measure um, pressures of liquids and gases. So in terms of um, the first section, so we're going to talk about the different phases, density and pressure of fluids. So, firstly, a substance can exist um, mainly as three in three different states. So, there's solid, in which the um, the substance maintains its shape and can withstand, you know, being squashed a little bit tensile. Pull in. Obviously, if you, you know, ex exert a, a too hard a force to it, it will break, but you know, will stay in its its same form. However. Um, fluids, which include both liquids and gases, they have little resistance to a permanent change in shape. So, you know, if you you can see that um, this liquid is under the force of gravity, so it's taken up um, the the shape of the the container that it's in. But also because of the the influence of gravity, it's all um, made its way to the bottom, and you have a free surface with the the um, the air at the top. And, you know, if you were to push your finger into this liquid, it would move out of the way. So there's no real um, resistance to <clears throat> change on shape. Um, and a gas kind of goes one more step further. So you become more uh, fluid, obviously, as you go f um, from solid to liquid uh, to gas. And a gas will take up the, con um, the shape of the container in all three dimensions. And this is because at a kind of a molecular level, what you're really doing is you're increasing the internal energy of the, the the substance and so there's the the molecules or um, atoms in this gas have more energy and they zoom apart from each other and leave big spaces between each other but that's kind of um, covered in another module so but that's kind of what you need to know for now and that both liquids and gases are fluids so taking that sort of subcategory of fluids. So again, we can break that down um, into two kind of subcategories. So incompressible fluids, which tend to be liquids, um, and in an incompressible liquid, that's kind of defined as um, a fluid whose um, volume changes negligibly when exerted, uh, when a force is exerted on it. So in other words, if you try and squish it much, then it it won't. It'll try and um, retain the same volume. So that shouldn't be confused with a solid, which will kind of do the same thing. It's still a, um, still a liquid, it's still a fluid, but its volume won't change much. Whereas a compress compressible fluid, which tend to be gases and vapours, if you compress them, their volume will change. So think of a piston in an internal comp um the air in a tyre, or the piston in an um, internal combustion engine where you're compressing the gas. And you can compress gases many times over um, b before they turn back into liquids. Okay, so the the state of a substance can be defined um, both by its um, pressure and temperature on what's called a phase diagram. And here's an example of one here for water. Okay, and we have temperature across the bottom uh, in degrees C and pressure in atmosphere at the side. So one atmosphere is um, the pressure um, kind of at sea level and if we just consider this if we have a um, atmosphere of one um, one atmospheric pressure and a kind of a, a temperature less than zero as you probably know that the water exists as a solid in that um, under those conditions in other words ice and if we were to keep the pressure the same and heat the substance um, once we get to zero, it would then um, melt and become liquid. And if we were to keep heating it further, once we reach its boiling point, um, and for that pressure, 
it would then evaporate and become a gas. So that's all kind of fairly intuitive. But one thing to, to bear in mind, you can see these um, phase transition lines. So for example, at point B here, at this particular temperature and pressure, the, the water is both a solid and a liquid. It's existing in those two states simultaneously. And likewise, at point C, the water is existing as in its liquid state and its gaseous state at the same time. And you might have noticed the point down here where um, these three lines intersect. And this is called the, the triple point. Okay, So that's where... Um, the substance can exist in both a solid, a liquid, and a gas simultaneously. Okay, so when you transition between these boundaries, they have um, different names, most of which um, you're probably familiar with, some of which are probably not. So going from a solid to a liquid is melting, going from a liquid to a gas is vaporization, then coming back the, the other way, going from a gas to a liquid is condensation and going from a liquid to a solid is freezing. But we haven't considered this boundary down here and these names are a little bit um, more uncommon. So going from a solid to a gas is called sub sublimination and going from a gas to a um, solid is called deposition. Okay, there's a neat video here which I played in my lecture. So I've just put the link in here, I won't play it, but what, what this um, video shows is this is a beaker full of um, cyclohexane, actually, it's not water. And I tried to capture a screen, screenshot here because what they've done in the video is they've managed to um, re set the conditions such that it's at the triple point um, for cyclohexane. So it's existing in all three states. So you kind of just see it here, there's some fluid at the bottom and this ice is almost boiling. So it's in all three um, states at once. So have a look at that video. It's, it's quite interesting. Okay, so now we come to the properties of these um, these fluids. And um, first one is density. Now, density is defined as um, the mass per unit volume. Okay, so um, mass normally in kilograms and volume normally in meters cubed. And um, for example, the density of water has a density of one thousand kilograms. Um, per meter cubed, okay, and that's as I say just the the mass per unit volume, and because water has this um, density, most other substances um, are kind of compared against to it or compared relative to it. To it, so um, the density of a substance can be defined in terms of its relative density. Obviously, it has its own density, but can be talked about in terms of its relative density, and the relative density is the um, the relative density of the um, substance times the density of water. So if we took some other substance which had a density of 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed, then its relative density would be 2. Okay, the next one I um, want to define is pressure. Okay, and the pressure is the force that's exerted per unit area. So if we consider this piston here, we're applying a force onto this piston and you know assuming that this is perfectly sealed there's this um, piston area and if this isn't moving um, if you know um, if this isn't moving then all the balances are for uh, all the forces are balanced so the force acting over this area is producing a pressure which is equal to the um, fluid pressure inside this piston which is resisting it okay so these two pressures would be equal if this wasn't moving so pressures, as I say, force over area, force is um, uh, measured in newtons and SI units, and the area would be meters squared. And uh, a one newton per meter squared is defined as a pascal, named after the scientist who did work in this area. So one pascal is one newton per meter squared. And you, you probably heard um, bar also referred to as um, terms of pressure, measuring things in bar. You know, again, if you're inflating your car tyres, you've um, probably seen that in the pumps. And one bar is equal to 100,000 pascals, or 10 to the 5 uh, newton metres squared. Okay, so, um, 
hydrostatic pressure. So before we're through this, just want to consider um, this column of liquid in a container. So what we want to know is what is the, the pressure that this liquid is exerting um, on the bottom of this um, uh, container here? And the reasons for this will become more clear as we go through the through the lecture why we want why we're interested in hydrostatic pressure. So, but let's just consider it. So we've got this liquid in here, this some height Hp, but the the actual height doesn't matter. So let's first look at the the volume of liquid in this um, cylinder. So the volume is equal to the area times the height. Okay, that gives us the volume. Now. From the volume, we can work out the mass. So mass is the density times the volume. So now we have density times the area times the height. And the force on the base is, um, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So it's the mass, um, but the acceleration in this instance is due to gravity. So it's gravity that's pulling it down. So we've got force equals mass times acceleration. So acceleration is gravitational force, that's G. So now we have rho a h g, okay, and that can be thought of as um, the weight of the, the fluid. So therefore we've got that force acting on the base of the container. So um, if we've got that force acting on that area, we get a pressure. So the pressure is equal to rho a h p um, g over a. And you can see that the two a terms in this equation would cancel. So therefore the pressure um, uh, this liquid due to the weight of the fluid above is the pressure is equal to rho g h okay so this is how you define hydrostatic pressure and it'll be used quite a lot um, throughout this lecture and it, actually the the um, the height term in this equation that relates to the hydrostatic pressure is often called the pressure head okay so you might hear things referred to in terms of meters rather than pascals but obviously all you do they're directly proportional you just times it by the density and the force due to gravity